What is up guys? Me again, it's time for another Around the World in 80 Days. And here we go, chapter 20, the final race. The the evening in the the evening. That evening in an air of sadness hung over Mr. Fogg's London home. Valley's Fogg knew he was financially ruined. Ruined by a glory seeking bumming bubbling detective fix had robbed him of his valid hour he spent in prison the first thing past the first thing past what I had done on arriving home to rush upstairs and turn off his gaslight which had been burning the whole time he was away he had already found a gas accounted in the mic mailbox he wasn't br Ave enough to open it. He, uh, he occurred would be more than he could pay. Adora had sat looking at Fadius Fogg, wondering where her future lies now. She felt very sorry indeed for her friend and protector. Nobody spoke much the next morning. The only conference that the, between in Fadius Fogg and Passport of the loyal servant wanted to blame everything fixed identity to stay secret for so long. But as Fogg did not blame him passport out, he said that he would have probably done the same in passport out's position. For all you know, laughed passport out, I could be I could have been and the bank robber. The hours passed slowly. Mr Fogg had decided to go to the reform club later that night. He had over uh, over the twenty eight thousand pounds in compassion. At seven thirty PM he went to speak to Aurora at her room. I was counting to give giving you the part of my fortune to help us settle in London, he said, but now I'm ruined. I know she said Aurora calmly, but you've been kind enough to me already. I have you two thanks for my life. I am more worried about what will become of you, Mr. Fogg. I'll be all right, said Fallis Fogg. I am in need eat of nothing. I, I have nothing. Wait, what? exclaimed Emor. Not your family nor your friends? No, replied Fallis Fogg matter of factly. Emor looked at, at Sturdy at Mr. Fogg. They they do say, sir, uh, that a loneliness is the best share for by two people. Valley's Fogg thought uh, that it was wonderful. Why of saying something special? But he wasn't ready for what comes next. I wonder, Mr. Fogg, said uh, asked said Aurora, taking taking his head hand. I wonder if I might struggle uh, an alternate. Alternative to loneliness. An alternative? Pallet's Fog I was puzzled. Aurora sit without hesitation. Will you marry me? For once? As I say, Pallet's Fog lost calm. His calm. But despite his shock, he knew the answer. Dear Aurora, perhaps you knew it all along. And he said triumphantly. Perhaps you, if you didn't. Did, and all, perhaps you did. And but. Uh, yes, I love, I do love you. I love of you from, from the moment I saw you. Then, then, what, what, what's your answer to my proposal of marriage? She asked. Valley's Fog blushed and smiled. That, uh, the answer is, of course, is yes. Pa Passapano was summoned and told the good news. He is absolutely delighted. Who needs money, any monsieur, he cried. When you have love... He was immediately sent off to see the Miss Mansur at the nearest church. Father's Fog wanted to m get married that very next day. At eight eight fifteen p.m., when Pastor Porter left the house at the finest minister, he knew the time, and because he had looked, just looked at the pocket watch, and it was eight twenty p.m. And by the time he knocked on the door, Mansur. Mr. Adore, he explained that Mr. 
and the mission of the Miss Shore. My master wants to be to be married, married tomorrow, he said. Tomorrow? Exclaimed, exclaimed the minister. The, that would be impossible. Well, I am too busy. It is it's Sunday after all. Sunday? He cried fast about Sunday? Cried fast about out. It couldn't be. It, it, it's, it's Monday tomorrow. It can't be. It's Monday tomorrow? You seem, you seem to be confused, sir. Said the minister. I promise you that tomorrow is Sunday. Tom today is Saturday. Passporto was un utterly puzzled. He, are you absolutely sure it's Saturday? He said, "Of course I am." Answered the minister. Passporto still froze to the spot of the moment, wondering what to do. It was as if the he had been hit by a thunderbolt. At the next thing. Next morning, fast border. A look at the man. His watch spun around. Around. He and he hurled down up down the street. He spun around the fast border. housing. I'd like a a man possessed. Fast border. Out his hair flying in its every direction. And he his hat is missing. Flew into with the mist into the door at twenty eight thirty two p.m. And sizing his master up by car, he dragged him out of the streets, calling and a roar of volume. No time to explain, he cried. And personally, we must get to the reform club of this instant. Cobb! And the hawk and the horse, a horse cap pulled up beside them. Has bought a hurl and his master and a roar from inside the at the door. Stop and slam the door to the reform club. I cried the Frenchman. Quickly! Our lives are 